Well, I'll begin by saying Happy New Year and welcome back. Well, it's not really a welcome back because this is a new project we're starting. The project is the subject house behind me. There it is. So this is our new project. Uh, yes, we're still working on the cottage, so fear not, you will see that uh, at its end in some point. But um, being the kind of people that we are, uh, we decided the cottage wasn't enough of a challenge, so we bought this house. Uh, this is called the Loring House, so we're going to call this the Loring House Project. And although the sign on the side of the house, you probably can't read it, but the sign on the front of the house says circa 1633, we're actually thinking it was built in around... 1658-ish, somewhere around there. 1658 is, is a good number. Uh, but this is the subject house, so let's talk a little bit about the house and then we'll take a little tour. I'll get out. This is what's called a center chimney cape. Probably can figure out why it's called a center chimney cape, because of the massive chimney that's sticking out of the roof. Now the interesting thing is, is inside the house, the chimney that you see sticking through the roof is about three times the size of that chimney. There are four fireplaces in this house. Kitchen, parlor, living room, and the master bedroom on the second floor. So it's a full cape, and it's a full cape because there's uh, two windows on each side of the front door. And uh, capes are typically rectangular, as this house is, if you could see it from above. And the pitch on the roof is rather steep and that's so the snow won't stay on the roof. The snow will slide off uh, easier. The dormers are not original to the house. Dormers would have been added much later. There was some documentation from the Massachusetts Historical Society, and they believe that the house was renovated sometime in the mid-1700s, uh, and that's perhaps when the dormers were added, although dormers are more of a kind of a 20th century addition, so they may have been added much later. Uh, than we think but uh, so it sits here up on a little bit of a rise uh, away from the street we're about I don't know 50 yards off the street there is to the right of the house there's a newer structure built um, I, I believe 2019 ish a two-car garage with some space uh, overhead but um, so here it is uh, circa 1658 there's as you can tell um, a lot of work to be done. Uh, if there wasn't, we probably wouldn't have bought it. Uh, but there's uh, some work that needs to be done on it. So we'll, we'll take a little tour. So let's walk around the house and then we'll go on the inside. Another feature of a cape are these high gable ends. We get those ends because of the pitch on the roof. Uh, so the bedrooms upstairs or the rooms on the second floor follow the roof pattern, um, as you can probably imagine. And that's why the dormers were added on the front to give a little bit more room. What I should have said when we were out front is typically capes are two rooms in the front, one larger room in the back. Your formal rooms would be in the front, dining room, parlor, uh, ours are dining rooms on the left hand side as you're looking at the front, the parlor's on the right hand side, and there's a kitchen across the back. Well, I guess it would be a eat in kitchen, a big working kitchen and a smaller room that more than likely in its original days was the nursery uh, where the children would have been uh, housed, raised, kept, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, while, they were, uh, while they were being raised. One of the projects that you can probably obviously see is the bulkhead right there uh, all needs to be replaced. So that will be a part of it. Uh, the siding is all gonna be removed from the house because you can tell uh, up there, there's some, it went out of focus when I stuck my finger in the way. Right there, there's a hole in the siding, so that's going to be uh, repaired. One of the contractors we had that came out and looked at the property was pretty certain that the trim around, the, although the windows are replacement windows, probably from the late 60s, uh, the trim around the windows seems to be, as, as far as he can tell, uh, original. Uh, to the house. And the 12 over 12 pattern is, um, would have been what would have been on the house originally. And those are individual panes of glass that's not applied uh, mullions or muttons from the outside. Those are 12 individual panes of glass in each one of those sash. All right, let's head to the back. 
So the back side of the house, obviously that door uh, is a replacement door at some point uh, not too long ago. And uh, that will remain for now, but will eventually get uh, replaced. There's cedar shingles or cedar shakes on the back of the house at this point, which we believe are going to be removed just because we're going to move some windows uh, for the new kitchen design inside. So we think it's just going to be easier to strip most of the shingles off uh, and replace them. And then that chimney that you see there on the end, that is an exterior chimney that really only exists to vent the furnace in the basement. And we believe we can direct vent the furnace. And so that chimney, uh, part of the plan is that chimney will come down and then, because uh, it looks like it's ready to fall down. So that's gonna happen. The roof, because you're probably wondering about the roof by looking at it. So cedar shingle roof, believe it or not, uh, the belief is there's about five years of life um, left on that roof. It, there's no real evidence of leakage inside the house. It may look a little wonky based on the kind of the waviness of the roof. And that's just because of the, its post and beam structure. So when you think of a traditionally framed house today, the roof, raft, roof rafters would be like 16 inches on center. There's probably eight roof rafters across the entire span of this roof. So the spaces in between is where there's no structure and that's where obviously over the number of years the roof's going to start to sag a little bit. But it is structurally sound uh, and like I said uh, it doesn't leak. So if you follow me we're going to take a trip on the inside. All right so we're coming in the back door and I'll explain all this mess over here in a minute but you come in the back door and this is the, the working kitchen, which will get renovated uh, as part of, the, uh, part of the construction that we're, that we're going to do here. Uh, but one of the features of this room that you can't see yet is the exposed beam ceilings. So you can see the original structure that's up there. And that's just in this one section of this room. So basically right over where we have this lovely plastic table, but where a kind of an eat-in uh, kitchen table would go. All right, so let's talk about uh, this fireplace. So the fireplace, this is one of four, as I mentioned, this is the largest of them. The firebox uh, is the largest because this would have been the cooking fireplace. The meals would have been cooked on that fireplace. Now, we don't know why, but the previous owners had begun a renovation project. And when we bought the house, and took possession of it just this few days ago. That was covered with sheetrock, as you can see on the top. There's a little bit left uh, that I couldn't reach. But we removed the sheetrock because we wanted to see what was behind it in the hopes that some of that paneling would still be there. That was all covered uh, in wood paneling. We do have an older photo of that that I'll put up that you'll be able to see sort of what it looked like. But that's going to be restored back to somewhat of its original character. It may not be we may not be able to restore it to its exact character because we don't have all of the, the pieces uh, to it. So, all right, so this is the kitchen. And that door right there is the bathroom, which we'll see in a minute because I know you're all fascinated to see what a 17th century bathroom looks like. By the way, the 17th century bathroom um, probably would have been up there somewhere, <laughs> just so you know. All right, off the kitchen through this door here, this probably would have been the nursery or where the children uh, would have been, just because it was close to the kitchen where uh, the mother would have been. Uh, so this is a, um, not really sure, probably six, six by 15. Maybe this room, um, plastered ceiling, plastered walls, Wayne's coating or Wayne's cotting, yes, as they would say, uh, around the room. You can see that, yes, there is electrical. Some people have asked if there was plumbing and electrical uh, in the house. Yes, the house was occupied until about two months ago um, when the previous owner uh, moved out. Lots of doors in this house. They would have had lots of doors for heat, uh, to keep heat in rooms. 